Welcome back to News Now on PNC. Defense attorney Mark Condes fighting to prohibit the testimony of a social worker in the rape trial of Francis Jude Titano. Condes asked that the social worker who did the initial intake for Titano's alleged victim not be allowed to testify because her testimony would be considered hearsay. Condes notes it's not admissible because the level of expertise of a social worker is not the same as a physician that would be able to make a proper diagnosis. And Condes also argued that the statements the victim gave were given six and a half years later. It would be more appropriate if a doctor came in here and said, okay, uh, I spoke to this is what told me. After listening to her, I made a diagnosis and this is the treatment I gave her. We have a victim who went to Healing Hearts Crisis Center and she had an intake by a social worker who determined that she needed further, further medical treatment, she was referred to a counselor. It's just another way for them to get hearsay in through the back door. And Judge Maria Senzon said that she was inclined to allow the social worker's testimony, as other judges have done so in the past. However, it's not clear if the social worker was able to testify today or not. Trial continues on Wednesday at 1 p.m. The governor has five major resolutions for the new year. In his weekly address, Governor Calvo says he resolves to move forward with the Hagatnya revitalization plan, tear down the old Department of Administration building, and begin the process of reconstructing the Spanish governor's palacio. He wants to cut the ribbon and get the farmer's co-op up and running and get to work constructing the fisherman's co-op in Hagatnya. He resolves to ramp up a workforce education program to decrease unemployment, and he plans to get Get more GovGuam services online. The five listed above are the ones I like to focus on this year, and I know they can be accomplished. I have the best team of co workers and leaders that anyone could ask for, and we've proved it in these past four years. Now that I'm asking, just we push a little bit harder and give just a little bit more so that we can reach a little bit higher. Have a blessed 2015, everybody, and let's get to work. And the governor says he also has a $100 million project in the works to fix the island's schools. And he says they're moving forward with improving the maternity ward at GMH. Governor Andy Calvo has merged the Department of Labor and AHRD. The two entities were combined in the past but separated. Now they are back together and with a new director. The governor signed Executive Order 2015-01, placing the Agency for Human Resource Development under the Department of Labor. DOL Director Manny Cruz is being replaced by Maria Connolly. Connolly has previously served as the director for the Department of Labor. According to a release from the governor's office, the merge of the two agencies is driven by the foreseen growth on Guam. The governor says he wants to ensure that Guamanians are prepared to take advantage of the opportunities that will become available. Do you need to renew your driver's license this week? If so, plan ahead as a driver's license and Guam ID branch at the Department of Revenue and Taxation will be closed from Friday to next week, Tuesday. The branch is upgrading the security of the processing and issuance of both driver's license and Guam ID cards. And as part of that, staff will have to attend a training session this Friday and Saturday. Revenue tax will also be closed on Monday in observance of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. The security upgrades are part of a federal effort titled Real ID, which aims to improve the reliability and accuracy of state-issued identification documents. Currently, each state and territory has its own criteria for producing and issuing state-issued driver's licenses and identification cards. The Real ID Act sets a minimum standard for all states and territories. The Trench Fest Reggae Festival is this weekend. The event's being put together by a group of young local entrepreneurs. In fact, they're all first cousins, which is why the O'Malley and Santa's brothers say Trench Fest will be a fun-filled family affair. Me, the Santa's brothers, and the O'Malley brothers, um, they're a family of five boys, and in my family there's four boys. The O'Malley and Santos brothers are first cousins who are teaming up to throw the Trench Fest Reggae Festival this weekend at the Guam Greyhound Park. I mean, we always knew we would do something together Some um, sort of as a group, yeah, because we've, we, we, we bond so well together, you know, we're, we're all like brothers. We don't really have too many friends outside our, our little circle. It's kind of like just our cousins and then our extended family.
This all started back in California where they were promoting their t-shirt brand, Calibus. They sponsored some large reggae festivals where they would share some good Guam barbecue at their tents. By sharing food and Guam hospitality, they made friends with some of the most popular West Coast reggae artists. They always remember Guam just by our food. They kept asking, why, why don't we throw a show? Why don't we do a concert? And so that's kind of how things started to come to fruition. And now, the green, iration, fortunate youth, Josh and Skillinjaw will all be playing the two-day festival here on Guam. You know, the public can expect a more festival type feel versus a concert, an actual concert. So what we're trying to do is get as much vendors out as we can so that people actually have something to do while they're there listening to the music. What we're really trying to bring together is the people who bring out their families and come and enjoy Guam as a whole. I mean, we're doing it for Guam. We really are, man. And tickets are available at Pika's Cafe, 9th Street Rotary, Jamaican Grill, Crowns Guam, Shell Locations, and the Common Chili Tree Store. The two-day festival begins this Friday at 4 p.m. at the Guam Greyhound Park. So will you be going this Friday? Actually, I might check it out. Yeah, it sounds really interesting. I think they I said, will, too. Uh, yeah, they said there's going to be uh, all kinds of uh, food and other stuff to kind of oh, entertain okay. people and the kids and stuff. You know, So they said it's actually they're looking at making it really family friendly, oh, not just a big uh, okay, concert. Okay, then maybe but, I will bring my But family. more of a festival kind of feel to right, it. Right, right. All right, well, Joanna is next with weather. Before we start, we got few things to note. The small craft advisory is in effect until Thursday. Travel by boat is very dangerous at this condition, so please avoid doing so as much as possible. Wind advisory is in effect as well, and the viewer says be careful if you're driving or are near small loose items. Welcome to PNC's weather forecast. I'm Joanna L. Cold day, wasn't it? Mm. But it seems like it will stay cold for a few more days. Unlike our usual temperature of 88 to 89, we're expecting highs to remain 85 until Thursday. So remember to bring jackets around. Winds usually blow at speed of 10 to 20 miles per hour. However, Expect 20 to 25 tonight and up to 35 miles per hour tomorrow. Fortunately, winds will back down into 25 miles per hour starting Tuesday night. But still, be careful and advisories remain in effect until Thursday night. Skies are expected to be mostly cloudy and breezy with isolated showers throughout the week, except tonight and tomorrow daytime, which are expected to have scattered showers with 50% chance of rain. That's it for me, but stay tuned for more on Sports Now here on PNC.